Hi, so are you an aspiring composer that wants to get into the world of trailer music? If yes, please put everything aside that you're doing right now and let's talk about some very essential points that will absolutely improve your music writing. So you probably know the following situation. You listen to a piece of trailer music and you like the energy and you absolutely wanted to get something going like this. You wanted to compose something like this piece of music. So you load up all your sample libraries, all your plugins and everything that you think will work and then you start writing full of enthusiasm. And after a while, your mix starts to sound cluttered and muddy. And then you think the mix is the problem. And then you start fixing it in the mix. And after becoming kind of desperate at the mixing or mastering stage, your track not only sounds cluttered or muddy, chances are pretty high that you put that much compression or limiting on the track that it starts sounding distorting and pumping. So let's use a comparison about what is happening here. So you want to build a house and you bring along all the building material and you have this awesome vision of this five floor mansion. So you start building and building and after a while it all starts crumbling like a house of cards by even putting up the first walls. So here's the problem. You want too much, you think too much and you try to make it too complex. And again, there is nothing wrong with complex music. I love it. But before you go complex, you just have to succeed with the easy stuff first. In other words, you can't get on the floor and doing 100 push-ups if you have never done 10 before. Get perfect at 10, then you can do 12, 14, 16 and so on until you reach 100. And even worse, with all your music writing, you want to impress other composers that most likely later on don't even care what is happening with your music anyway. So here's a possible solution. Let's hop over to my digital audio workstation and let's start writing a trailer-like main theme. So the first thing we're going to do is building kind of like a sketch of what is going on. So we just do chords and we just do the melody. You can use a piano sound or some kind of a synth, whatever. Let's go. So always keep in mind, it is most likely that you have everything that you need for your entire 2 minutes 30 trailer track. Everything you need is in this information. If you base your intro on this main melody that is pretty easy, that has a lot of space for counter stuff, you can't go wrong. So next up let's do a little string sustain pad that is basically taking over the chords that we already used here. So keep in mind that we are not trying to win the most realistic string sounds competition. All we care for is writing an easy to digest track that people enjoy listening to and that is not overly complex. Also keep in mind that these chords are not dense or closed chords. So you can see that the E minor here at the beginning, you have the root here the E, then you have the fifth up here and you have the third below. So you want to create wide string sound with this. Okay, next up we have a little string ostinato that moves along with the chords. Let's check it out. Okay, you get the idea, let's listen to how it sounds.
I should also mention that I used Nucleus strings for the sustain patch and the spiccato strings. So next up, let's bring in some heavy trombones and I am using the 12th trombone patch of Orchestral Tools Junk XL Brass. So of course it depends, but usually I like to write really close chords like this. But in this case, I felt like going with the root, the fifth and the third on top. So it sounds a little bit more open. Let's listen to this. And so on. Please keep in mind, I just wanted to preserve the root for the lowest trombone note. So that's why this chord is a little bit more close than the others. So what do we have so far? Okay, so now let's put some emphasis on the melody and use some juicy junk XL French horns here. While we're just listening to the melody, let me quickly record the modulation here. So let's listen to how this sounds. Let's listen, let's make this a little bit longer here. Let me just quickly paint this in here. Okay. So you may ask yourself, why no legato horns? Seriously, legato horns are overrated, especially at this volume. The horn players need all their breath and all their power, and I find legato lines sound displaced when it comes to something epic like this. Okay, so let's bring in some percussions here, and I'm using Damage 2, the Armageddon 2 ensemble. So definitely nothing special here, but you may have noticed that it plays a stable groove. There are no experiments in here, no outbreaks, nor nothing that may provide clutter and chaos to the track. Next up, let's have a bass pulse and I'm using Repro 1 here and it sounds like this. It simply plays the bass notes. And so on. Let's listen to how this sounds. Okay, so at least I have the feeling that our track is getting somewhere. So if you want, you could bring in an additional sub bass. So I'm using Diva for this and it sounds like this solo. Okay, and combined with what we have so far, it sounds like this.
you get the idea. Okay, so what in the end we could add to make this track more mighty and more epic? Right, choirs. So for this track I'm using Choir Essentials by Stretsov. <laughs> Okay, so let's listen to how this sounds with the full track we have so far and then I explain what I did here. Okay, so first thing, the choir is a little bit late, so we will put an additional minus 100 milliseconds on top that will play back the choir a little bit earlier so it all is in flow. Definitely better. So in case you're struggling with how to get a dense sounding choir, um, but you just want to focus on the melody and you don't know how to uh, set up the entire choir arrangement, there is an easy trick that you could use. Uh, the first thing is that you just take care of the melody itself, right? So these are the melody notes. And the next thing, what is going on here is basically the chord notes so this would be the e and this is the b of the e minor chord right and all it combines it sounds like this so here the track changes to d major so the note from the melody is actually the fifth of the d major here and so on you basically use the main melody notes and then you put the chord notes below and by doing this you create a pretty dense sounding choir arrangement And never forget to use the mod wheel and insert dynamics. This is the most important thing of a track. Okay, so let's quickly talk about the mixing and the mastering process because there is not a lot going on. I just put a little bit of an EQ uh, for the strings. Let's listen to this. To make them a little bit brighter, that's it. Uh, I also have a little bit of compression here for the choir. And another little bit of EQ to bring out really the high parts and get rid of a little bit of here, like three, four hundred hertz. To get rid of that bump and create a little bit of more space to the mix. Uh, also what I did is routing all the orchestral instruments, basically strings and brass, to a bus and apply a little bit of additional reverb. This is how it sounds without. This is how it sounds with. It's just this tad of the Sanders Hall of 7th Heaven reverb. I really recommend that reverb, especially since it's just something like 69 or 99 dollars. I don't remember it right now, but it's not really expensive. Last but not least, I have a little bit of OTT, multiband compression on here. This is a free plugin. I really recommend to get this. Sounds like this without. <laughs> And like this with. Last but not least, I have a little bit of invisible limiter going on here. You can take any limiter. Basically, you can take any plugin. It doesn't really matter. All uh, that matters is that you know what you're doing. Let's listen to this, how it sounds without. And with limiting.
So as you can see, there is not a lot going on with the mixing and the mastering process, but our track already sounds pretty dense, juicy and kind of heroic, mighty, epic, however you want to put it. So this just proves that the arrangement itself is the most important. If you've done that right, then mixing and mastering will become way easier. Okay, now it's your turn. You have to do something for me. If you like this video, please press the like button. Please leave a comment in the comment section or even subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And if you're interested to learn more about trailer music production, check out the video description and find a link to my trailer music course. There is some really great stuff in there almost 100 videos available and counting. So thanks so much for watching this video and see you on my next one. Mm -hmm.